<laughs> we now move to the second part uh, of Agenda Item 5, Public Participation. Can I reiterate that it is important that everybody is given a chance to hear all the proceedings of the meeting. And with this in mind, may I ask that you refrain from interrupting the meeting in any way or using any noisy items. <coughs> the Council has received notice that Mr S. Butcher of Binfield on behalf of Binfield Village Protection Society, will present a deputation regarding their concerns about the proposal removal of the Section 52 of the agreement currently protecting <coughs> Blue Mountain Golf Course, Binfield, from development. Mr Butcher, would you like to come forward to present the deputation? You have up to three minutes. Madam Mayor, Councillors, there are too many unresolved issues and serious questions relating to the proposal for Blue Mountain. In our conversations with you, it seems that many councillors were initially unaware of the existing agreement put in place by this council to protect the site for the benefit of local residents. When the vote was taken, a party whip was imposed. This was a breach of protocol, and you have to ask why it was necessary. Tonight, as we understand it, and perhaps somebody could confirm, you have the freedom to ask why and to vote how you see fit. We have over 2,100 signatures from across the borough, 320 objection letters, around 150 resident surveys, as well as copies of letters to the local MP who did write to register his objection, which demonstrate the widespread despair level of opposition across the borough. The council's motive for wishing to destroy a protected greenfield site remains at best difficult to pin down. The concept of building 450 houses on the site does not make the site viable for a developer who will want more. Better, lower cost, more accessible sites for a school exist in Warfield, Amen Corner or unused office space. Removing a football club from central Bracknell, placing it in the heart of a <coughs> successful Bingfield Community Club, just doesn't make any sense. Each argument has been advanced and contradicted in council correspondence. It is as if the real reason why Blue Mountain must disappear is hidden and cannot be declared. Residents have asked us to convey their feelings of betrayal. Few residents are qualified lawyers, they're just regular folk with regular lives. They have interpreted a publicly given assurance from the council to preserve Blue Mountain to mean just that. The council now wishes to remove the legal agreement and yet asks residents to trust it to deliver against a wish list. How does that work? If the agreement is removed, developers will have free reign to propose whatever they want. This will go through the planning process and eventually will be built. The removal of the agreement jeopardizes the whole site, immediately removing a valued community asset, damaging a fibre business with a loss of up to 60 local jobs, and betrays the trust of residents across the borough. Given these unanswered questions, the impact on residents' lives and the uncertainty which would otherwise be unleashed we ask you tonight to vote to reject the removal of the Section 52 agreement or, as a minimum, to defer your decision until these issues and questions can be resolved. Thank you for your attention. listen carefully to your submission and we will be taking it very seriously. The strength of feeling of our residents and of Bracknell, oh, sorry, Binfield Village Protection Society, whom you represent this evening. Does any member wish to ask a factual question to Mr Butcher? Council Lord and then Council Mr. <coughs> yes, Mr Butcher, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, 
you, um, you mentioned that one of the possible sites for the school could be a uh, an office block in Bracknell. Um, have you actually suggested to the public in Binfield that uh, you know that we might su suggest an office <coughs> block for their children to go to? And do you think it would receive widespread support among Bin Binfield parents? Um, we suggested it and not only uh, discussed it as PDPS with the residents that we represent and in meetings with council officers. Um, I didn't actually suggest that they should go to school in an office so we could use one of the issues of these buildings and convert it to a school, but nevertheless. Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Butcher, uh, were you aware that when this council debated the site allocations policy and uh, my colleague, uh, Councillor uh, Leek yeah. and I actually raised this issue uh, of the Section 52 agreement? It was, it was debated, it was brought to the attention of the council at the time, and the council decided to basically, that it didn't have any weight to it. Was I aware that you were aware of it? Um, the conversations that we've had during this process with a number of councillors in this room led us to believe that a number of councillors were aware of that situation. Does any other member wish to speak? Sorry, is that a supplementary? Would, would you then say they probably weren't paying attention in the debate? No, because it certainly was brought up. And, Count, um, councillors did make reference to it. John, I wasn't party to the debate, I wasn't in the room, I, I wouldn't dare to suggest. Does any other member wish to uh, ask a, a factual question to Mr. Butcher? This matter is due to be considered fully under agenda item 7. I therefore propose that we defer our consideration of this item to agenda item 7. Is that agreed? Agreed. Agenda item 7. We come on page 19 of our agenda papers. A joint report from the Boris Solicitor and the Director of Environment, Culture and Communities Report regarding the release of Blue Mountain Golf Course from 1990 Section 52 Agreement. Please note that on page 27 of the agenda papers there is an error in the third paragraph. It should say Temple Park and not Genesis. Does any member have a question? Councillor Bodega. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We adopted the site allocation plan on the 17th of July uh, last year. Was the existence and the effect of the Section 52 agreement made known to the planning inspector uh, when he made the recommendation uh, for the borough to adopt uh, the site allocation plan. Councillor Leek. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I can answer that question uh, for you, and, and the answer is yes, the inspector was fully aware. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wonder if I can ask through you to the officers. On page 23, this is really a bit of an educational question <coughs> to get some idea of size in mind. But on the top of page 23, it tells us there that if this went ahead on Blue Mountain, 40% of the land would be for housing. <coughs> 20% for schools and playing fields, and 40% for 
or open space. Can I ask you to give me some indication of what 40% means that I can put into perspective to understand the size that would become available to the general public?
that has previously been agreed by this council. In effect, the revised recommendation means that Section 52 will not be released in such a way as to give the developer carte blanche to develop the site except in line with the SALP. Members will be aware that at its meeting of the 10th of December, the Executive considered a report concerning the release of the Section 52 agreement relating to land at Blue Mountain Golf Course. After considering the report, the Executive expressed support for the Section 52 agreement to be released, and I discharged the responsibility to make the decision formally to Councillor Turrell in his capacity as Executive Member for Planning and Transport. Of course, we recognise the strength of local feeling. We want to ensure that this whole process is as transparent as possible. So the Executive therefore also agreed that Council should be given the opportunity to express its thoughts on the matter. The intention of bringing this report to Council is to ensure that Councillor Turrell is fully informed of Councillors' views, as well as those views received through the consultation when he makes his decision on the release of the Section 52 Agreement. Releasing this covenant is the next step in the process of delivering the overall development strategy, which is embodied in the Site Allocations Local Plan, which was adopted by this Council in July last year. Blue Mountain is a very important part of that strategy, as it provides the site for a secondary school, along with a primary school and special educational needs facilities. <laughs> These are urgently needed to provide places for the families within the north of the borough, including those that will occupy the planned new developments. I refer to the scale of that need a few minutes ago in my executive report. The strategy in the SALP is the outcome of a lengthy planning and public consultation process and has been subject to a very full and thorough independent examination. The planning inspector found that the council's process of selecting and allocating sites for development was both legally compliant and inherently sound. Throughout this process, including at the examination in public, it has been known that the Section 52 agreement would need to be varied. Indeed, the planning inspector recognised from the existence of the legal agreement that the council has departed from its previous approach to this land. However, he was satisfied that the site selection methodology was sufficiently robust to justify the principle of development in this location. The provision of a secondary school was a key part of that, as well as the much needed housing. We should also remember that the proposals for the site require the retention of a gap between Binfield and Bracknell and the provision of 28 acres of publicly accessible open space. The development will include a new community hub and the potential for community use of many of the facilities provided within the new schools. Planning applications have already been submitted for hundreds of new homes in the north of the borough in line with the SALP. It is our responsibility to ensure that the schools are in place in time to meet the needs that these will generate and the needs that I mentioned earlier that already exist. I recognise local residents' concerns and can understand their opposition to the release of a legal agreement in order to implement this part of the plan for the borough's future. However, as a council, we have wide responsibilities for our whole community, and we must deal with the issues we face in 2014, some of which could not necessarily have been easily foreseen in the 1980s and the 1990s. In this case, the future needs of children are on balance paramount. And to enable those needs to be met, I move that the Council recommend to Councillor Turrell 
that the Section 52 covenant be released in line yeah, with the revised regulation. Shame on you, lot. Shame that we put you there to do this. That's what we elected you to do. Don't touch the land, leave it as it is. You probably don't even live in the borough. Excellency, I know you have strong feelings about this issue. Well, in that case, listen to us then. We continue without any interruptions so that everybody is able to hear what is being said. Thank you. It's a stitch up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And to enable the needs of the whole borough to be met, I move that Council recommend to Councillor Turrell that the Section 52 Covenant be released in line with the revised recommendation that has now been tabled. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Best. Is that seconded? That is seconded. Shame on you as well. Madam Mayor, may I also make a request that if there are further outbursts, that I'm moved that the Chamber be cleared. Breathtaking arrogance. What a scumbag. Let's see how they vote you in again the next year, you'll see. It's I'm actually interested in what any of the residents have to say, isn't it? You're not, not listening to anybody, just Can yourself. Can I remind you that this is an opportunity for everyone to is hear it? what is being said. I hope if you so. keep interrupting, I will have to clear the room. Please quiet, quiet down, please. What? Can I just ask you permission? Can subject. someone from the public speak on that Please behalf? let us carry on the meeting. Councillor Birch, do you wish to speak I'll now reserve. or reserve? I'll reserve that moment. Does any other member wish to speak? Councillor Tull. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As has been said, this item has been referred to tonight's council meeting because of the high level of public interest in it. This meeting is the best place to discuss it as it affects the whole borough. Bracknell Forest is a very attractive area to developers and comes under considerable pressure from their planning applications. The only effective defence against a developer free-for-all is to have an adopted and up-to-date development plan. Public benefit is at the heart of this. Immediate coverage, day by day, we are seeing ever more clearly the value of having effective and up-to-date planning policies. The SLP sites were consulted on in 2010 and many other times. This is a feature of the local plan process. In 2011, all Conservative candidates stood on a key manifesto promise to produce a defensible site allocation plan for the borough. In the election, we received a clear mandate to implement this promise. After a rigorous examination by an inspector, the council adopted the SALP in July 2013. So we have a plan. We saw the value of it recently when we were able to refuse a planning application for 72 houses outside the settlement boundary at Tilehurst Lane Bidley. Comprehensive, not scattered development is the most effective way to get the right additional infrastructure needed, and the council put this case forward. Paragraphs 36 to 38 of the report, the inspector accepted these comments. Much has been said about the site, uh, at the site of Blue Mountain. Um, I just refer people to page 135 of tonight's agenda, which is, in which is reprinted in paragraphs 103 to 108 of the inspector's report, where he considers this site. He winds up the paragraph 106 to conclude three of the uses mentioned would not be dissimilar in character to the land's existing recreational nature. A clear visual separation would be maintained between the northern wing of Fred Binfield and the northern edge of the urban extension. The paragraph 104, the inspector refers to the document submitted to him as SAL 116, <coughs> section 52 agreement. Tonight's recommendation on that, uh, as amend the amended recommendation that has been circulated, is set out very clearly. The key to the final decision is whether the public interest in providing housing and school facilities on this site overrides other considerations, including those set out in very many representations I have received. The Council recognises the strength of feeling on this matter and does not take it lightly. 
A vote will be taken at the end of tonight's debate. Since I will be taking the decision as the executive member, I will not be participating in that. I would now like to hear further contributions from councillors. Thank you. Councillor Mrs. Pyle. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a difficult one, I know. Bradmoon was a new town, started in the 1950s. And it was a place given to those, particularly from the east end of London, who could have a chance to live in a beautiful, green environment. It was only going to be 25,000, then it went to 60. And it has, since then, it has never stopped being developed. When will it stop? When all the green grass is under concrete? I know the cry is the need for more homes, but with the three parties policy with the EU open door, we will never have enough homes to house everyone, even if we concrete over the whole of the United Kingdom. The council sat in this chamber and put in what they thought was to be a safeguard for this area. The Conservative group, naturally, have found a legal loophole to justify the tearing up of this agreement. I stand by my decision it's formally suspended back in November 2011. <coughs> and Madam Mayor, please may we have a recorded vote. Thank you.
I believe then that the reasons for its inclusion, and it was a deliberate inclusion, were wrong for all the reasons that I stated then. There had at that point been no debate or discussion on any other options that might have existed, and the inclusion of the location for the development was, in my view, a clear breach of the promise which was made to residents at the time of Section 52 agreement, mm -hmm. along with the 125 year lease, were entered into. Mm -hmm. uh, members here will know that I have always held it here that if something is wrong, then it is wrong. The passage of time and other circumstances does not turn a wrong action into a right action. And I still hold that view. I believe, and I said it at the time, that we made a dreadful mistake in including Blue Mountain. It was done knowing the difficulties that would flow, including the one that we are having tonight, the discussion about the Section 52 agreement. And I am confident that there will be other difficulties and discussions that will follow. <coughs> this issue is not about site and housing alone. No. Both I and the residents of Pinkfield accept <coughs> that there is a need for sensible and sensitive housing development to take place. We have already seen that in Pinkfield and we know that there is more hopefully sensible development to come. Indeed, the vast majority of the housing aspirations contained in this plan take place in my electoral ward. That is not the issue. The issue is the spoilation of an area identified in our own core strategy as a green buffer, open space, and recreational area. Madam Mayor, even if I was not so opposed to the development of Blue Mountain, I would still not be happy with the original recommendation that was in our agenda papers, as I believe it was full of uncertainty. I do appreciate the amendments that the leader has made to the recommendation to try to reassure residents, but I am still not confident that those uncertainties are removed. There are no timescales indicated, and I understand that there are still a very significant number of other issues to be resolved before this can go forward. There has also been no mention of the funding issues that remain to be clarified before this plan can even be considered viable. And once that Section 52 agreement is gone, without those issues having been satisfactorily concluded and or resolved, then we cannot say what might happen. Councillor Finch made reference and Councillor Terrell referred to the inspector's report. I think we need to remember that the inspector had one plan in front of him. It wasn't necessarily the best plan, it was a plan. And it was his job to make that plan work. It wasn't to approve it or reject it. It was to make it work and to ensure that it could work. He was, as the Chief Executive has said, aware of the Section 52 agreement. And as I was at the inquiry, I knew perfectly well that he said, that's not my problem, that's yours. <laughs> it is not too late, even at this stage, Madam Mayor, to draw back and take a second breath. As a council, we are not taking a decision here. We are making a recommendation to the Executive Member for Planning and Transportation, who has the responsibility for taking that decision. And yes, it will take courage, it will take foresight, and it will take initiative to say, hang on, we really need to take a second look at this again. There are other options open to us. They might not be easy options, and they might not be bureaucratically or administratively convenient, but they do exist. And this is a decision which affects the lives of hundreds 
if not thousands of people, for years to come. And will deprive not just the people of Binfield, but residents all over the borough of an open space recreation facility which they highly value and which we promise them. For all these reasons, Madam Mayor, I cannot and I will not support this recommendation, <coughs> improved though it is. And I urge Councillor Terrell to give substantial weight, indeed overriding weight, to the points that I have made, along with the representations that have been made throughout the borough, not just in Binfield, yeah. and take those into consideration. Whatever decision is eventually made, uh, Madam Mayor, if it is what I think is the right decision, which is to reject the release of the 52 agreement, I shall be, and other people will be watching, to make sure that that takes place and is maintained. If it's the wrong decision, then I can assure that every piece of proposal, word scrutiny, I dotted and T cross, will be watched and scrutinized and scrutinized because it is not the right thing to do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And that is why I will not support it. 
accepting the consequences that follow. Thank you. Councillor Ms Wilson and then Councillor Harrison. I would, I'm not going to speak for more because I've copied already and using my voice. I will endorse what Council McLean, Council Lee, and Council Harrison are saying, and I will not be voting for it. Permanent does mean permanent, even Thank in the you. lives of actuals. Thank and, you. And um, it does strike me as a, Thank you. a very inadequate reason why we have to accept this. I cannot believe a borough this size that can't be more suitable, or perhaps not more suitable, but perhaps more efficacious means of building housing that we need. Um, I'm going to stop the clock off again, but I will not be open for the Thank you. Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would point out to my colleague, Councillor Ms. Wilson, I haven't actually spoken yet on this, so, but um, I'm sure I, I can't put it any more eloquently than, than uh, Councillor McClay and Councillor Lee have already done so, so I won't even try and I'll be repeating those arguments. All I'd say is this I think it's very important to keep promises, even if those are implicit promises. But if you go along the course of action that leads people to we deliberately need people to believe that something is permanent. It's as good as promising it. At the, at the last election, I promised people to be able to defend the mountain, and I think that's what this. And you can always trust me to keep my promises. tonight for a group of people whose voice has not been heard in this room, and I'm conscious that this is a very contentious issue. It's a group of people who every year contact me, often sad, often confused, and often disillusioned with the school admissions process in this borough. If they've not succeeded in actually getting a place at the school of their choice in the local area. And they say to me, that the splitting of friendship groups, the logistical challenge of having children in more than one school, and the issues that brings, and long journeys to and from schools, causes not only disruption to their learning, but also to their social networks and family life. Now, over the years, we can pride ourselves in Bradford Forest with our people place planning, which went largely uncommented on earlier on this meeting, as being effective, rigorous, and delivers against the numbers it suggests. There are many local authorities in this country that express concerns about their process, and achieving a better than 3% accuracy overall on those numbers, I think is actually quite laudable. And indeed, it has actually over the years led to securing funds to expand those schools. Now, without wishing to reiterate the comments earlier, we are experiencing unprecedented demand for existing housing before we even consider the new housing agreement as part of the SADPD. <coughs> Up till 2018, and if you look at page 5 of the agenda, it sets out very clearly how we can achieve those numbers and absorb those additional pupils in the right schools in the right places. But post-2018, the challenge of demand is for new schools. That is primary schools, that is a new secondary school, and that is also provision for those with special educational needs. And we have to be very careful when we consider where we locate these schools, because they have to be in places which are both sustainable and accessible for the housing. One bus, two hours. But I want to pose one key concern that I have. <laughs> Something that follows on from talking to those parents, actually, <coughs> including some in Temple Park. And that is that as demand for places gets ever tighter, the places that will first be affected in this borough will be actually in the rural parts of North Bracknell, in Binfield and Moorfield. Because to be absolutely clear, and having been through this process on a number of occasions, when sibling rules and other things have been taken into account, places are allocated on a radial basis from the school. Garfield College is just across the road. The further away you live from Garfield College, the harder it is to get a place. Well, some of the same have said to me during this process, you can bus me to a different school. If that was the only challenge, then that would be an answer. But at the same time, the Genesis Park Development is maturing, the number of children in that school are building, 
East Hampstead Park, the school that is fed from it, Janice Park, is building up in terms of its numbers. The option for people unsuccessful in securing places in Garfield College going to East Hampstead Park is reducing year on year. <coughs> and furthermore, at the same time of those challenges, at the moment we have 250 or more Bracknell Forest pupils educated at St Christmas in Wokingham, many from the Binfield area. There is new development going ahead in Wokingham and over the next few years, access to those places will be reduced. So it is absolutely clearly the case against any forecast or projection that we need to provide those places. And one thing I'm passionate about in this borough is making sure that children can be educated in local schools local to where they live. Primary school provision is actually comparatively straightforward. The land take is not huge because the principle of locating primary schools in all developments. I will point out something that has been said to me consistently since 1997 is why didn't Temple Park have a primary school? Indeed, we have representations as councils in this process from residents of Temple Park saying this would help ensure in future generations my children could go to a school serving Temple Park, not a school further away from home, and actually I missed out, I don't want others to. Quite courageous, I think, in the face of the general debate and discussion. Because you spend the money on something else. So post 2018, we need to deliver a secondary school. Now, I'm grateful for the suggestions that have been made, but I do think it's important, Madam Mayor, if you bear with me, that I just briefly run through the principles that guide us to choosing Blue Mountain for the proposed site for the Learning Village. It has been suggested that we can provide that additional school in Wheatfield. It is too far away from where the people need to access the school, and there is not an appropriate site there. It's been suggested that it could go in Warfield. That was a site that was under consideration for a number of years, but the SADPD identified the land there for up to, and we can debate the numbers elsewhere, 2,200 houses. There is no land available in Warfield without Park moving right. to Greenbelt and elsewhere to accommodate a school. And I personally feel that Warfield is right. quite enough for this process. So that takes us on to the suggestion that we could locate a secondary school in an empty office building. Assuming you could find an empty office building large enough to find a house in that the old place in the wild and built in huge. Harvest wise. Where are these people going? Stop interrupting, please. You seem to know so much. Stop the meeting. Stop the meeting. Thank you. Stop the meeting. Stop the meeting. Stop the meeting. Thank you. A secondary school, as you can see if you look across the road, is much more than a building with a car park. A secondary school is a building that has playing fields, that has associated facilities so for playing fields the fields and a school building for classrooms and other facilities. There is no office building in the right place in Bracknell Forest that has the 12, 10 to 12 hectares of land associated with it that would accommodate a secondary school. Then there is the suggestion that we could build on a greenfield site. Do we seriously want to damage further our greenfield, our open space, further to the north of our way away from we need it, to actually do that. It's got a green belt designation in something we want to protect. Development. Harvest right development. This is, where you is a project that will cost tens of millions of pounds. The need is to locate the school where it's accessible for many, many youngsters that need to attend it. It needs to be in a location that's sustainable. When Berkshire County Council existed a number of years ago, it fudged in a neighbouring borough the decision to place a secondary school called Charters. Those of you that know the designated area for Charters, People travel from miles around to get to that school each morning, each evening. It costs local residents and taxpayers a huge amount of money to bus children to and from that school, and it doesn't actually support their learning journey. So although I fully understand the concerns in this room no, about the covenant, I really do. I live and understand what that means. I have to say that as the lead member for education here, I recommend to Councillor Turrell that in the circumstance that no other site being available, having been examined by the inspector, to meet the needs of those pupils in the future, to ensure that the residents of Binfield's children can be educated in Binfield, can be educated close to home, and can have the benefits of the quality of education <coughs> those of us who are in the borough have, that we have no alternative for this evening. Yes, you do. Yes, you do have alternatives. Where are those people tonight that are so bothered? Councillor Ward. Where are the letters in favour? Um, None. A referendum is what we want. Councillor Tarrell referred a short while ago to the plan. Um, and of course, we have a plan, and that was the plan that we voted on last year. Some people here, and maybe like me occasionally or frequently, watch the country files. And two Sundays ago, that program was devoted almost entirely to planning issues. 
And what we saw in the program was, in fact, uh, a councillor and a group of concerned residents and somebody from the CPRE looking over a hedge at some fields in a farm, and they were saying it's that pleasant. the councillors refused planning permission on this farm on several occasions, uh, and it's now refused it again, but this time it's the building <coughs> in our head. How has that come about? And then the answer to the question was that that particular borough did not have a plan. It then transpired that 48% of boroughs don't have plans. But of course, the constant to that is 52% do. And the 48% that don't are, in many cases, willfully not produce those plans. And that's why they were in the position of these people uh, there. Now, if we didn't have a plan, then any field in North Cracknell could be allocated that housing by just having a planning application put on that uh, on that that piece of land. Absolutely any place could. Now our plan defends against that. Now members have also said, particularly Council Leap, that we could spend the next year or so, he didn't specify the length of time, but spend some more time considering the, the whole issue. Well while we were considering it we'd be in the same position as the people in this uh, uh, in the country file program. Because if we do not release the covenant on the Blue Mountain site, and the Blue Mountain site cannot provide the school uh, as provided, the plan falls. And you can't modify the plan, you have to start again. You've got to make and modifications to go to anyway. And meanwhile, Anybody could develop anywhere by just identifying the site and saying Bracknell Forest does not have a plan. There's a piece of land here and I'm going to put a planning application. They do have That's to demonstrate that it's sustainable. 125 years. That is a matter of the That's not supposed to be touched. The eye of the beholder no, it's it's not about difficult mm -hmm. to, to actually do that. I'm sure we have a plan in the water. Can you show the point of order that in there? But while Councillor Ward is entitled to his opinion, he's not entitled to say that the whole site allocations would fall if we didn't develop exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I did ask that question. Always have to make modifications. Uh, I understood was the, the answer to that, <laughs> but it, it, it's not modifi uh, modifiable. Uh, the Chief Planning Officer could. Uh, it was always that that was incorrect. It was that was my understanding that that is the position. Now, we have a plan and we put it to a vote a year ago. I'm glad that Mrs. Pyle has asked for a recorded vote because it gives me no uh, problem at all to support this publicly. Uh, the issue of the WIP vote at the, the last occasion was portrayed as if actually most people would have voted against if only they hadn't been whipped. That was not true. An overwhelming number were supportive of the plan. Not at all. There were not at all. Nonsense. Nonsense. There were, well, how did you know? There were uh, a hundreds there were a of objections. Were not, hundreds. Two of them. No, no, uh, Can you please stop interrupting? I want to ask again. Uh, 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 so, there was a, the overwhelming majority, of course, I'm talking about of the councils, not sorry, there is, there is a problem, not the overwhelming number of people that live in Bloomfield, I'll accept that, uh, uh, or even in New Zealand. Uh, the, um, the site, uh, so the site allocation plan is crucial, absolutely crucial, and I'm not an enthusiast for busing children, in any direction, and <coughs> Councillor Barnard has eloquently put the case, we are responsible for education, and when all this was over, in five years' time, if we didn't do this, I wouldn't want to be facing the people in Binfield who came up to me and said, well, how on earth could you have given uh, all our children in an office block um, on the west of the... That's what you listen to people today, not in five years' time. I'm happy to support the, the 
think I'm happy to support it publicly mm -hmm. and have no problems whatsoever with it. Of course you don't. The party tells you to vote. Thank you, Councillor Does any other member wish to speak? <coughs> Councillor Miss Brown. Again, to agreement. ensure that the release will secure that any housing development is only carried out in accordance with the SAL SA7, I therefore agree that Section 52 agreement should be released, but only on that basis. You're so wrong, Thank you, Mr. Uh, Councillor Birch, do you wish to speak? And then uh, Councillor Betters and sum up. Thank you. Um, I will be supporting the amended motion uh, as I was pleased to 
Secondly, uh, before I go and say, I just need to correct a few comments. Uh, I was very disappointed that Council Mrs. Park uh, wanted to inject into some political point about the need for homes coming from youth. That is not the whole truth, is it? Because let's look at where need comes from. And I said this at the executive the need for more homes comes from within the community itself. <coughs> what, there are lots of drivers as to why we need more homes. I'll give you one, the divorce rate. When people divorce, they it's need lower than it's ever been. <coughs> another place to live. One of the things <laughs> no, is they don't want to live too far away because children are at school. So is that what the cake That's is? a real issue. There are other real issues that drive the need for homes. There are a lot of companies in the area that want to expand. And they want people, they want uh, Why do people you to be employed. It's an industrial and that is driving. And that's a good thing. It's loads of empty offices. It's loads of empty offices. In jobs and prosperity in this area is linked to home. And we need to be able to offer the firms that want to come to this area Awful. a number of things. We need to offer the them homes for help. their staff. But we also need to offer them good, sound education for their children. And that, and, and that, and we need to offer them the, the healthy, strong and open environment that the SL plan will provide and does provide. Another point of clarification, the inspector could have rejected the plan. The inspector could have done. The inspector had, the inspectors across the country have rejected local plans before. So, they could have done that. He didn't do that. So why he decided to, this, this to is work a and to approve. It? And it was approved. Now, the issue of permanency and <coughs> in any legal agreement, the permanency comes from both parties wishing to maintain it. If one or both parties wish to amend it or rescind it, then they can do that. It's a legal agreement. And it happens when no, in my own property, have been when agreement. I had a covenant and no, I wanted to extend my house, I wrote right. to uh, people from who uh, were the landowners, and life. I varied it, and I was able to do that. Because my circumstances change, and You're circumstances right. change. And it is my job, no members, that, really? to be cognizant of that change and to use the facts available today to meet those objectives that are the need for new homes, to meet all those points I've been making earlier, and to provide the right educational opportunities for all the residents to come. We would be absolutely abrogating our responsibilities to you are. future residents. You are. What about existing ones? As a whole, You're breaking your word. If we went back through what we've been through before, if we did not support the need of young people for a sound education. So what we about the are going to be what about the people who walk blue mountains? Yeah. People pay the taxes. Determination to deliver the site allocations local plan Who pays it and the that protection it brings. Yes. Yeah. And I was one that spoke very clearly at the last planning meeting about the Tilehurst development at the Council of Tarot, and we used that strong plan to totally annihilate that application, and it's not there. You haven't had and the appeal yet. <laughs> and that is the assurance. And the assurance then what? in the revised uh, motion says that the executive no, no, what is talking about? Not to the the yeah. satisfied mm. that the developer will conform to what has been agreed in some allocations local plan. Just one and, and, 
and that is the basis of the <coughs> nonsense. That's what I it think is. this is a good recommendation. It will deliver the highest. Good for you. All those in favour, ask for, for a hand. This is the last it time will, I will no. ask you not to interrupt, and it will allow us to move forward and secure the future education of young people in the dark. This is the last time I, I will ask you yeah, cool. uh, not to interrupt. And next time I'll have no option but to clear the chamber. And I mean that. Thank you. Councillor Bedson, would you like to sum up? Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I listened intently to this debate. Um, although I would... Uh, uh, suggest that uh, uh, my colleague, Councillor Turrell, will have equaled the intensity of his, uh, 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 of his listening. Um, and I am reminded by what a number of colleagues have referred to, that of course the decision on what development should take place on this site was made in July last year. This decision was taken in the full knowledge of the existence of the S52 document, Section 52 document. The inspector subsequently approved the SALP in the full knowledge that the Section 52 would need to be extinguished. Without uh, reiterating too much of what has already been said, I would just comment that the open space currently referred to is not legally public. It is a private golf course, and the management of that course could secure their grounds at any time of their choosing. It might not cost them a bit of security, but they could. However, the public open space public will be publicly available at all times. The community uses within the schools will also add additional public amenity from the site. Just wanted to mention that, Madam Mayor, because I thought one or two contributions would be a little, uh, 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 a little skewed. <laughs> Madam Mayor, having listened intently to the debate, I am of the opinion that this council should support the, rec the revised recommendation that I tabled earlier and recommend to the Executive Member for Planning and Transportation that subject to the details of the revised recommendation that he agrees to go ahead with the extinguishment of the section 52. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Betterson. A recorded vote has been asked for. I would now hand over to the Chief Executive to conduct that vote. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So the vote is about the revised recommendation that's been circulated in the room. I will call each councillor by name alphabetically so you can signify whether you're for, against, or abstaining in the motion. Councillor Allen. For. Councillor Angel. For. Councillor Easton. For. Councillor Bailey. For. Councillor Barnard. For. Councillor Mrs. Barber. Four. Councillor Besson. Four. Councillor Birch. Four. Councillor Mrs. Birch. Four. Councillor Blatchford. Four. Councillor Crossard. Four. <coughs> Councillor Ms. Brown. Four. Councillor Brunel Walker. Four. Councillor Bates. Four. Councillor Dudley. Four. Councillor Finch. Four. Councillor Finney. Four. Councillor Vidibo. Four. 
Councillor Stanford. Four. Councillor Harrison. Conservative. Councillor Mrs. Hayes. Four. Councillor Mrs. Hayes. Four. Councillor Hayes. Four. Councillor Kent. Four. Councillor Kenson. Four. Councillor Lee. Councillor McCracken. Four. Councillor Mrs. McCracken. Councilor Mr. Phillips. Councilor Ms. Miller. Councilor Mr. Potter. Thanks. Councilor Ford. Councilor Sergeant. Against. Councilor Mr. Tedder. Four. Councilor Toro. Say. Councillor Burger. Four. Councillor Wade. Four. Councillor Wall. Four. Councillor Miss Wilson. Councillor Wall. Four. We have 34 for, six <coughs> against, and one abstention. The vote is carried. Boo! Shame on you all of you. Shame on everyone. Yeah. Follow the money. Follow the money. You deserve to be counsellors of money. Somebody in the pocket. Yeah, I've got it. Hot this week tonight. <laughs> Sorry. Thank <laughs> you. 
agenda item 8. We have on page 169 of our agenda papers the Director of Corporate Services report regarding membership of committees and external body representation. Please note an addendum report has been tabled this evening for this item. Does any member have a question? There have been no questions. Would any member like to move the table of recommendation? Councillor Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to move the 